In Georgia, the verdict of guilty but mentally ill allows the court to recognize that a defendant had significant mental health challenges at the time of a crime, while also holding them criminally responsible. Now, this designation ensures that the individual will receive some mental health treatment while serving their sentence, but it doesn't absolve them of culpability. So, so in the case of Chloe Driver, just convicted of murder, the influence of that cult-like polygamous group that she was involved in appears to have played a key role in the deterioration of her mental health, contributing to the tragic outcome of her actions. We're gonna look at it and I wanna know what you think. Hey, welcome to Profiling Evil, and thanks for hitting that subscribe button. Make sure you're hitting like and get the notifications so you get all of our videos. Please consider sharing us with your friends, and hey, give us a thumbs up, would you please? Now, the case against Chloe Driver is pretty simple. In 2020, Driver was accused of fatally stabbing her 13-month-old daughter, Hannah, in a Georgia courtroom. The jury found her guilty beyond reasonable doubt, but mentally ill on all charges, which included malice murder, felony murder, first degree cruelty to children, and aggravated assault. Mr. Foreman, has the jury reached a verdict? We have, Your Honor. Uh, is it signed and dated by you as foreman? Yes, it is. All right, if you could give the verdict form to the bailiff, I will inspect it before I ask you to publish it. Give that back to the foreman. Mr. Foreman, if you will stand, uh, Mr. Driver and counsel, if you will stand, uh, if you will read the jury's verdict, please. For each count below, we, the jury, find the defendant, count one, malice murder, guilty beyond a reasonable doubt, but mentally ill, count two, felony murder, aggravated assault, guilty beyond a reasonable doubt, but mentally ill, count three, felony murder, cruelty to children in the first degree, guilty beyond a reasonable doubt, but mentally ill. Count four, aggravated assault. Guilty beyond a reasonable doubt, but mentally ill. Count five, cruelty to children in the first degree. Guilty beyond a reasonable doubt, but mentally ill. So found this 20th day of November, 2024. Thank you, sir. Uh, members of the jury, this case will be set for sentencing on another day, uh, likely either to be December 12th or December 18th. Uh, I'm going to confirm that with counsel. And what we know is that people, you know, literally around the world have been uh, watching us and commenting on what uh, has transpired. Driver pled not guilty by reason of insanity, arguing that her mental health state rendered her incapable of distinguishing from right and wrong. And you saw me on court TV on a number of nights say it appears she knew the difference and she chose to violate the law anyway. Uh, Mike, how about some of this behavior? Uh, it's, it's always, there's always a man as the, the leader of, this, of these groups. But what are your thoughts about the urine drinking? Is that cult-like behavior? Yeah, absolutely, Vinny, and there's some interesting things here. I mean, there are a few cults out there where females are at the head of those, and, uh, you know, we can talk about those at some point, but it's it's usually an authoritarian male figure who's this kind of charismatic leader and central figure, and having bizarre doctrine seems to be part of the whole picture, having this idea. Now, the urine's a new one on me, and, and it's been interesting to watch this guy as he testifies about this and tries to make it so matter of fact and so scientific. Uh, but it really is interesting because what would normally seem entirely confusing to people like you and me, and probably even to this individual who testified about drinking urine, it was probably a little bit out there in the beginning stages. But slowly these cults are so effective at convincing the members that the ideology and the doctrine and the leader are so special and so in tune that they fall in line. And then once they start investing, it's really hard to go back and say, holy cow, I made some really stupid mistakes by joining this group.
Now, the cult's influence on driver's mental state appears pretty obvious. Driver was part of a polygamous group led by Benjamin Ben Michael, also known as Z. Nicknames, I don't know. Testimony revealed that Driver shared a deeply strained and emotionally abusive relationship with Ben Michael, who had at least two other wives that we're aware of that came out in court. Now, according to clinical evaluations, this polygamist environment exasperated Driver's paranoia and delusional thinking. She, be she believed that she and her daughter were embodiments of sin and experienced intense feelings of isolation from the rest of the group. So she started kind of pushing toward this paranoia and delusions that apparently the jury bought off on. Dr. McLendon Garrett, a psychologist with the Georgia Department of Behavioral Health and Developmental Disabilities, if I got it all right, evaluated Chloe Driver after the incident. Garrett testified that Driver suffered from severe paranoia and delusions, including the belief that she could read other people's minds and that these knives that were frequently appearing around her were some kind of an ominous symbol. Driver described feeling immense guilt, believing she was pouring her sin into Hannah, this little child, while breastfeeding her. These delusions were influenced by her strained relationships within the group, where she reportedly felt rejected and demonized. Well, the fatal trigger in all this, the situation that caused her to reach a breaking point came after a minor altercation with Ben Michael, during which he dismissed Driver's plea for clean clothes for Hannah by throwing a dirty shirt at her. Now, according to the testimony and what I've been able to pick up in public documents in her delusional state, Driver interpreted this act as confirmation of her unworthiness, and she felt like she had no choice but to end the life of her child and try to take her own life. Well, this turned into a legal debate. I don't think anyone disagreed she murdered that child. But the prosecution argued that despite her mental illness, she was aware of her actions and her, the consequences of those actions. They pointed toward evidence that Driver understood the permanency of killing Hannah, challenging the defense's ins assertion of insanity. The defense, on the other hand, maintained that Driver's delusions were fueled by the cult dynamics and the emotional abuse she was experiencing, and it all rendered her incapable of distinguishing right from wrong. Way, how do you see the issue of people inside attempting to, um, I guess, escape? Is that the word that we want to use here? Yeah, I, th I think escape's a great word, and and you do see people who try to leave polygamous cults. Uh, and these organizations are so well put together that what they do is they strip people of all of their outside support system, number one. So unless they have a financial means or a connection to the outside, that is absolutely terrifying for people. In, in the FLDS where Sam came from, and I knew Sam's dad, and I, I think I knew Sam when he was a little boy, but watching that cult, they were so good at keeping you away from everyone. When I drove into town, Vinny, you, you were you were treated horribly, and you were followed by the God Squad, they called it, who, who literally chased you out of town as fast as they could. When you talk to people inside, they immediately would throw up their hands because to them, an outsider is the devil. And that's the way they're trained. And so to get information into those organizations like we tried to do in the attorney general's office is next to impossible because they feign interest and say, yes, we want to hear about child abuse and other things and tell our people, but it's all a scam and they put people in front to be the person receiving it, but there's no intention of ever letting that get to the end of the row in a farming term. So that's the case, but she's guilty. And I hope you'll catch me on Court TV tonight as I talk about the case with Vinnie Politon. This case has been disturbing from the get-go, and I'd really like to know what your thoughts are on this, and I hope you'll enter them in the comments section down below. And please, take some time and read other people's comments and weigh in on those. The guilty verdict, the guilty by mental illness verdict, acknowledges the significant role that mental illness played in Chloe Driver's actions while ensuring that she's accountable under the law for murdering that child. 
This case sheds light on how manipulative environments like polygamous groups and cults, like the one that Chloe belonged to, can deeply impact one person's mental health and result in devastating outcomes. In this tragic instance, driver's mental illness and the toxic cult dynamics intertwine to create a perfect storm of paranoia, delusions, and profound despair. Hey folks, remember that you can find Profiling Evil on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter. And make sure that you're checking out our new podcast playlist called Twisted Tales. Twisted Tales looks into cases that haven't been in the news for a while, but it gives us a way to continue our true crime pursuits while learning from the predatory behavior of criminals. My hope is that by doing Twisted Tales, we can reduce our own risk of being victimized by these kinds of predators. Twisted Tales is a more relaxed approach to crime, and I think you'll really like it. You know what? We've already dropped a couple of videos in the series, and I hope to do a whole lot more while continuing to provide coverage on regular criminal cases like this one, the case of Chloe Driver. Hey, don't forget about our website at profilingevil.com. It's a place where you can check out our story maps and our new unsolved murders and missing persons crowdsource map. Those maps are a really cool place where you can enter in cases from your own community, regardless of where you live in the world. And while you're on the website, look into our books, great Christmas gifts, and I'll sign them and ship them anywhere in the U.S. for free. And folks, if you like audio podcasts, I hope you'll check out Profiling Evil Podcasts on your favorite podcast platform. So until we get a chance to chat again, I hope that you'll find some balance in your true crime consumption. Hey, thanks again for your support, and we'll see you all soon at the next crime scene.